How's everyone doing? It's my birthday! <laughs> this is going to be my uh, birthday haul video. And actually my birthday was last week, but uh, some of the things that I ordered actually just came in, so I finally uh, decided to do everything in like one video instead of doing it in separate videos. <laughs> um, first off, I'm gonna show you what uh, Emily got me. Uh, she's been in a few of my videos recently, and um, she baked me a cake. And I was joking with her because we were in, uh, I'm in a couple fantasy football leagues and uh, she's in one of the leagues that I'm in and I'm, I'm number one in the league and I was just joking with her because my uh, name on the league is the champ in that one and I'm like, you should, uh, when you make the cake, you should be happy birthday the champ. And she's like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but she did give me a balloon that says, uh, you're number one. So that was cute and sweet. And uh, I really enjoyed that she, uh, you know, baked me a cake that was very thoughtful. I got uh, socks. Um, actually, I, I wanted socks because it's winter time and it's freezing in New Jersey. Um, and these are thick, nice socks. And they're, you know, I like kind of dorky stuff. Uh, all my boxer shorts, they're kind of like novelty ones like that. I like novelty socks and stuff as well. Um, so yeah, I, I, they're, they're soft, they're warm. And when I was a kid, I used to hate getting socks as a uh, Christmas gift. But uh, now I enjoy it. <laughs> How times have changed, adulting right there. So yeah, just some socks uh, from American Eagle and uh, some boxer shorts as well. I actually uh, picked these out on my wish list. Uh, penguin boxers and candy cane boxers. They're both flannel boxers. So uh, there you go, extra large, cause I'm chubby. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to wear these. It's freezing, uh, gotta keep myself warm. Uh, <laughs> next up, she got me a bag of Essentially, movie snacks, Whoppers, uh, Sour Patch Kids, which is one of my all-time favorite go-to uh, movie snacks right there. Um, Reese's Pieces coming up next. Making sure stuff doesn't fall over here. That's a classic. I remember since E.T. Um, honey Roasted Peanuts. I like cashews, peanuts, stuff like that. And uh, some gum. I eat a lot of gum and a lot of mints. Um, uh, York Peppermint Patties, I like, there's a whole bunch of other stuff in here. I, this is probably one of my all-time favorite, uh, go-to movie snacks and snacks in general. Uh, Tootsie Pops. Grape is my favorite flavor right there. Uh, so yeah, just a bunch more Tootsie Pops and stuff in here. Uh, York Peppermint Patties, stuff like that. But I thought that was a cute, sweet little thing right there. Uh, and then she got me, um, uh, some Funko Pops. And I have movies coming, movies are towards the end of this video. Um, but, uh, she got me two Funko Pops. Uh, this is the Yoda Christmas one, which I think looks awesome. And I don't know if these are GameStop exclusives or not, or maybe one of them is a GameStop exclusive. Like, there's, a, I know there's a Darth Vader glow in the dark one. Maybe that's it. I'm not sure. But I thought uh, I didn't really love the Darth Vader one because it's a glow in the dark. But I think it's like only the candy cane that glows in the dark. Uh, I really like the Chewbacca one um, too. I thought that's cool when he's all tangled up in the lights. But the Yoda one, this one right here, was my favorite by far of the uh, Christmas Star Wars ones. So very excited. I'm going to take this out of the box because I like to keep my uh, Funkos out. Uh, I don't like to keep them imprisoned. Uh, I like displaying my uh, my figures right there. So there he is. Pretty awesome. And I recently came in contact with somebody who had never heard of Funko Pops. I was like, I'm like, even if you don't collect them, you know what they are. And this person claimed that they didn't. Um, so I had to be a dork and show them. <laughs> and I don't know. I, I think that's awesome. Yoda is amazing. Let me know who your favorite Star Wars character is from all the different movies. Leave me a comment down below on that. And let me know when your birthday is. Leave me some comments on that. And next up, this is probably like the number one Funko Pop on my wish list right there. And she got it for me. And it is amazing. The Shining Jack Torrance uh, limited edition Chase right there. The Frozen one. There's the regular one. And then there's this Frozen one. And there's the other characters, and uh, this is just, it's got the blood splatter on the box, which I think is cool, and then the red rum, uh, which is partially uh, covered up by the sticker right there. But uh, I do think the box on this one is cool, and it has the blood splatter. But still, I think they're made for display. I get it if you're a hardcore Funko Pop collector, you're taking them or you're keeping them in the boxes and stuff. But for me, I definitely prefer um, taking them out and displaying the figures. But uh, that's just me. Let me know if you collect Funko Pops, what you do with them. But uh, I just I think that looks awesome. I love the detailing on it right there. One of my all-time favorite movies, a classic. You can just get so... Every like 
subsequent rewatch, you can see little things coming out more and more. Um, but I absolutely love that. That looks amazing to me. There you go. One of my, again, one of my all-time favorite movies. Again, I love horror movies with a snowy setting. Uh, John Carpenter's The Thing is my all-time favorite movie. The Shining is uh, probably uh, in my uh, top five, I'd say. There you go. Love that. Suit. So adding that to my Funko Pop collection. Let me know if you collect Funko Pops and if you do, what your favorite Funko Pop is that you have in your collection. I think next up on my uh, wish list for my top Funko Pops is the uh, Chase for uh, the Invisible Man, which was, I think, a Walgreens exclusive. Um, but yeah, that that's awesome. Souped on that. And I'm going to be doing a uh, Funko Pop, uh, I guess, collection video. I don't have a ton. Uh, I don't know. I got maybe like 15 or so. But uh, most of them are horror. So, And I got a few Star Wars ones, too. And uh, she also got me the Gremlins Steelbook. Uh, right there, which is awesome. I realized that I got rid of my Gremlins DVD, and I had a Gremlins um, uh, Australian Easy DVD 10 with both the movies in there, but it's uh, Region 4, I think, so I couldn't play that one anymore. Uh, and I did a 24-hour uh, horror movie marathon video with Emily, which I haven't posted yet because it's going to be a ton of editing. Uh, but I had to rent Gremlins off the TV to watch it because it was part of our uh, our list that we were going to watch. So. I was like, I need to get this on Blu-ray. How do I not have it? I thought I did get it because uh, there's a lot of movies that uh, when Blu-ray was coming out, I uh, got rid of the DVD and intended to upgrade. And I just never did. But uh, that looks awesome. It's the FY exclusive uh, Gremlin Steelbook right there. This is a classic. Another one of my favorites. Uh, it is kind of darker, though, especially when Phoebe Cates talks about her father. Uh, but I love it. It's a lot of fun, too, and just oh, incredible. I can't wait to... Uh, check out the special features. There's over 10 minutes of footage not seen in theaters and making of featurette commentaries. So I'm actually, uh, I like the special features for movies that I uh, enjoy, um, that I'm a big fan of. So I'll be checking those special features out. So there you go. And, you know, they always could make a third one. Because uh, I believe in the end of the second one, there was like the female gremlin who was still alive. And that's actually uh, a couple other Funko Pops I'd like to get. There's the female gremlin and then there's like the flasher one too. So those are kind of fun ones. Uh, next up, she got me two Criterions, which I'm excited about. Uh, Princess Bride is the first one. Now, I will say, um, the back of this, when you take off the adhesive, it kind of removes uh, some of the lettering right there. But uh, I still uh, I still enjoy it. It's, you know, just a little nitpicking. But I like the digibook design. I like the fabric of it. It kind of works for the movie itself, too, because he's reading the, the bedtime story to uh, Fred Savage. Um, but this was a classic. So, so many memories with this. So many great scenes, memorable lines, um, just as you wish. Like, there's, ah, it's incredible. It's hilarious. It's a fun time. Uh, very exciting. And I love these digibook styles. Any kind of one that has like a booklet or anything like that. There's the disc right there. Uh, where you have a lot of behind the scenes information. If you're a fan of the film, I think you'll really appreciate that. And I love uh, the design for it too with uh, the artwork and things like that. Um, and there's as you wish on the back. Uh, but I really like that. Really cool, unique one for Criterion Collection. I think this is, as far as packaging design-wise, uh, one of the best that they've done. Uh, I definitely enjoy it. Criterion Collection does an amazing job with the releases transfer-wise, special feature-wise. Um, a ton of uh, special features on here. Right there. That was on the back. And uh, I am definitely excited. Um, yeah, it's the special edition, Monsters, Miracles, and Kissing. Uh, fencing, Fighting, Torture, Revenge. It's a little sticker that they had on the outside of it. But uh, a classic right there. I remember watching it all the time as a kid and excited for this release. I have a few different editions of uh, Princess Bride. I had like two DVDs. I'm going to let go. One was like a Dread Pirate Roberts edition. I'm going to get let that one go because I had a previous DVD. It was like a more of a standard one, but I had watched that one so many times. So I'm going to keep that for the memories. And then I have like the Blu-ray anniversary edition. I was able to get that signed up by Carrie Ellis. He did like a, I think it was a radio uh, thing. And it was like a giveaway. So, um, yeah, that was pretty cool. And, uh, I, I, you know, I can't get rid of the autographed one, so I'm going to keep this one, too. But I am going to get rid of that Dread Pirates Robert Edition DVD. Uh, next up is Silence of the Lambs uh, Digipack Edition right here, which, a classic. There you go. Let me know what your favorite adaptation of, or, I guess, take iteration of uh, Hannibal Lecter is right there. I, I really love Manhunter. That, to me, uh, was incredible. Noonan, I just was amazing, uh, so creepy in that role. Um, then uh, I can't remember who was, was it, uh, I can't remember which guy it was now that played uh, Hannibal Lecter. It was a brief one, but um, yeah, it's just the, the synth soundtrack in there is just awesome.
but uh, thick booklet in here too. Again, I absolutely love when they include that. And uh, the Digipack, the two disc one right there. And again, I like when they do um, the Digipack edition, something a little bit different. Um, just a classic right here. Anthony Hopkins, uh, his, uh, his role was amazing in such a short role uh, such a small role screen time wise but for him to get the acclaims that he has I was trying to put it in the wrong way right there uh, that's what she said <laughs> uh, but uh, such an amazing film I remember watching this in uh, film class like way back in the day um, gave me a little bit more of appreciation for it too I was already a fan of it uh, but yeah a, a classic right there so many quotable lines in that one too uh, next up are uh, all the movies that I got myself oh I mean, this uh, Emily gave this to me too. It was, you know, kind of like a novelty joke kind of thing. But I've been, you know, I figured I'd rock it for this. I, I put it on when she uh, gave me the gifts and stuff. Um, but uh, these are all the movies that I picked up myself. I got Spiral, which is one I wanted to pick up for a while. This is directed by Adam Green, who did the Hatchet movies. Uh, I'm definitely a big fan of him. And this one uh, was a really good, creepy, uh, kind of a mystery thriller. Joel David Moore is in here, and he plays like this artist. They're not sure if he's a serial killer or not. And she's trying to figure out uh, this girl that he's a crush on, Amber uh, Tambalin. Um, so it's just kind of the mystery and intrigue of that. And kind of like a psychological thriller, really. Um, it says on the back, a Hitchcock tale. It is, from what I remember, it is slightly Hitchcockian. Um, but I remember really enjoying the heck out of it. I haven't seen it in years. So happy to pick this one up. That's one that's been on my wish list for a while. Another one that's been on my wish list is Billy Madison. Uh, again, this is another one where I got rid of the DVD a while ago. And I meant to pick up the Blu-ray and just haven't. Uh, let me know what your favorite Adam Sandler movie is. This is probably my favorite Adam Sandler movie. I absolutely love this one. So many memorable scenes, quotable lines in here. It's just amazing. And the girl, I always thought was so stunningly hot. Is it Bridget Wilson? I guess that's who it is. I, I, yeah, I assume that's, that must be who it is on here. But uh, she was stunning. She's been in a few other things. Uh, but I love all the, the cat. Norm MacDonald is great in here. So many uh, memorable parts in here. I He gets to go back to school. The, the whole concept is absurd and ridiculous. Um... <laughs> Let me know if you have a favorite scene in here or a favorite line. There's just so many amazing ones. Uh, there's over 25 minutes of the deleted scenes. I wonder if I've ever seen any of the deleted scenes. I might not have, so looking forward to checking that out. And I need to pick up some more uh, Adam Sandler Blu-rays that I meant to up, uh, upgrade a while ago. Next up was another Adam Sandler one, and it was Damon Wayans with Bulletproof. I remember really enjoying this one, too. I believe Damon Wayans is a police officer, and they used to be really good friends, and he has to bring him in, and he keeps trying to escape. James Caan is in here as a... Uh, drug kingpin and I just remember this being a fun time and I remember uh, I saw uh, Damon Wayans uh, perform live stand-up and I was able to get him to sign a poster for me for uh, the last Boy Scout uh, what I didn't realize afterwards is he had signed it three times his name three times on the poster it was a big you know uh, theatrical poster 27 by 41 and then uh, on Bruce Willis he drew a mustache because uh, Bruce Willis was on uh, the front with him uh, on the poster with uh, Damon Wayans. And I, I thought that was kind of funny. I guess maybe they didn't get along. I heard Bruce Willis can be kind of prickly and not easy to get along with. But what was funny about that, too, even more so with him doing that, uh, was that Bruce Willis already had kind of like scruff and a mustache on there. So he drew like the mustache on top of it. Uh, but I, I never liked that he had signed it three times. That was kind of annoying. Maybe he had a couple drinks in him. You know, that happens, stand-up comedy and stuff like that. Um, it was after the show, but uh, I was I was kind of annoyed that he had signed it three times. But anyways, I digress. It's still cool to have. And then for a while, he wasn't doing anything because he had, I think, like diabetes-related issues, and he didn't travel. And now I guess he is doing that again. He's traveling. I guess he's got it under control. And he has um, the Lethal Weapon TV show, which I actually really enjoyed. And I know the other lead actor, they uh, kicked him off, and I guess people didn't like him, including Damon Wayans. Uh, and now they have Stifler on there, Sean William Scott, who I actually really like as an actor. Um, so it's, it's interesting. I think it kind of shows that he is a good actor because you couldn't tell there's any issue with the original lead actor on that TV show. They seem to have really good chemistry. Um, but anyway, I digress. This is a really fun one that I've enjoyed for a long time. Happy to pick it up on Blu-ray. Next up is The Toy, which is another one that I remember loving as a kid. I haven't seen it in a while. Jackie Gleason, Richard Pryor, classic Richard, Richard Pryor. Uh, let me know what your favorite Richard Pryor movie is. Um... Yeah, I always joke about this Jackie Gleason from The Honeymooners. Flintstone was basically just like a cartoon take on The Honeymooners. Uh, but Jackie Gleason in The Honeymooners, he always used to say, bang, straight to the moon, Alice. You can never get away with a joke like that today. It's basically a joke about domestic violence. Could you imagine like all the social media outcry? People would lose their jobs instantly for even attempting to make a, a TV show with jokes like that in it. That was like an every episode joke. 
Uh, but basically, from what I remember watching this, uh, Jack Gleason was like a multi-millionaire or billionaire or whatever it was, tons of money. And his little spoiled son right there uh, decides that uh, he, he sees him working, I think, as a janitor in his uh, store, department store, the Bates department store. And um, he basically decides he wants him to basically entertain him. So he basically hires him to entertain his son. Uh, and just, it's crazy hijinks, and he's a little spoiled brat. Richard Pryor is great playing off of him. And then later has a kind of a deeper emotional message. And I just remember this being a really fun time. This is also another one that you probably couldn't get away with uh, doing today. Uh, next up is The Great Outdoors, which is another one that I loved as a kid. Uh, great comedy uh, playoff right there. Uh, Dan Aykroyd and John Candy, I love their chemistry. Uh, they're going on vacation in the woods. I remember the big bear. Uh, just a fun time. And uh, the in-laws, and I, I just, I love it. And this one also does have a bit of a deeper uh, emotional message by the end of the movie, which I really enjoy. Uh, also another one that comes to mind, the same kind of uh, aspect with that, you know, starts with that comedy, and then clashing, going back and forth. Steve Martin, John Candy, and uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. And then by the end, it has kind of a, a deeper uh, emotional message, a little bit somber. Uh, that's another one that I always loved. But uh, this is one that I've been meaning to pick up for a while. I'm glad to finally add it to the collection. Yeah, I usually horror is my favorite genre by far. I, I realize that uh, I don't have a lot of comedy. I love stand-up comedy, but I'm really picky when it comes to comedy movies. Uh, a lot of the movies that are really popular, especially today's comedy movies, I usually hate. Uh, it's just cringy. They just usually curse a lot, show some nudity, and that's supposed to be played off as funny. And to me, it just is cringy and forced and anything but funny. Um, so, yeah, but a lot of today's comedy movies I'm just not big into. Um, there's very few that I do enjoy a lot of, especially a lot of the well-known comedic actors like Melissa McCarthy is probably one of the, you know, popular female comedic actresses and I just can't stand her. They always kind of push her off as like a female Chris Farley and I, ugh, just, ugh, I just can't stand her so much. And I used to be a big fan of Amy Schumer. Her stand-up comedy was great and now I, I can't really stand her either. Um, her movies I'm definitely not a fan of and just... Ah, just her everything that she talks about I uh, just uh, and her stand-up was basically the same thing it was a lot of sex jokes and then she had her TV show inside Amy Schumer and people were saying she was uh, you know kind of feminist comedy she's not at all she's still doing the same sex jokes and stuff her writers might be feminist uh, comedy stuff right there her writers are doing a good job there but uh, she still does the same stuff and then the, her movies have been awful for me I digress I was going off on a rant and tangent I do that a lot in my videos which is why I tend to edit a lot and I'm going to try not to edit too much in this video, if at all, if I can help it. I'm already well over the a lot of time in it I wanted to do for this. Uh, but <laughs> I just, I talk, talk, talk. Uh, especially when it comes to movies, I just get into it. I uh, think about uh, actors and what they've been in other stuff, directors and stuff like that. But uh, next up is Just Friends. This is another one that I've wanted to pick up for a while. This is actually a Canadian release. I don't think there is a U.S. release for it, but I had to get this one uh, imported. Ryan Reynolds, Amy Smart. This is one that I love. I'm a big fan of Ryan Reynolds. I've been a big fan of his since uh, Two Guys, a Girl on a Pizza Place, which is a TV show, uh, maybe early 2000s, late 90s, somewhere around that timeline. And I was thinking at that time, I was like, ah, oh, this guy is hilarious. He deserves to be famous. I felt the same way about Amy Schumer back in the day when I used to see her stand up like years, like, I don't know, six, seven years ago. And then she blew up. Um, and then she kind of turned her whole personality. Uh, Ryan Reynolds, on the other hand, still seemed humble and authentic and. Uh, just very likable to me and I love that he can do different roles kind of like The Rock he can do action roles he can do comedic roles it just works uh, but yeah uh, Ryan Reynolds great as Deadpool and hilarious here he used to be like the fat dorky kid that was friend zoned in high school and had a big crush on Amy Smart who was like their best friends and then he uh, grew up and uh, got in shape and uh, become became kind of a, he, I think he works for like uh, musicians and stuff he's like big into that kind of whole scene and changed his whole attitude and he's in shape and thinks he's too cool and then he goes back home and he kind of falls back into his kind of dorkyish ways and following her around like a puppy dog and uh, it's just it's great it kind of reminds me a little bit like a something about Mary as far as how many people had a crush on her and stuff like that um, I really enjoyed the heck out of this I really like um, oh it's the brother's name in here uh, Chris Marquette is great. I loved him in Infestation as well. Great horror, sci-fi, comedy movie. Definitely check Infestation out. I did a review on that on my channel like forever ago. But Chris Marquette is great in this one. Oh, I love it. Um, who else? Um, Amy Smart. Anna Ferris, So good in here as the crazy. Oh, I, remember the, I still remember the scene of her at the bar. And she, 
Uh, when she's uh, talking back to Ryan Reynolds, that there's one line that she says that still cracks me. I'm just thinking about it. I'm not going to repeat it because there's you know foul language in there, but I love it. Uh, this is such a fun, ridiculous, over-the-top comedy movie. So enjoyable to me. and it's I guess it has some uh, holiday aspects because he's going back home during the holidays, so there's that. Next up is a blind buy, Girls Trip, with uh, Regina Hall, Tiffany Haddish, Jada Pinkett-Smith, and Queen Latifah. Uh, this was inexpensive. I think it was like five bucks, so I figured why not? I'll uh, check it out. Um, sell the code for like you know two fifty, so it's essentially like two fifty right there. And it's a Blu-ray DVD combo pack. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Tiffany Haddish. I feel like that's another uh, actress, comedic actress that they're just kind of pushing all the time. Um, yeah, I don't know, but I really like uh, Jada Pinkett Smith. I like Regina Hall a lot as well. Queen Latifah, I do like too. Uh, but basically, I guess it's a girl trip movie. I think there's a breakup. They're trying to, uh, basically, it says um, they're going to the Big Easy. They're just basically trying to, they haven't gotten together as a, a girl group in a while, but uh, basically just trying to enjoy life and uh, fall back into the old routines, maybe. I mean, that's what I was going with in my mind right there. But yeah, they're going to New Orleans and uh, rekindling friendships. And kind of, I guess they're trying to get over a breakup and stuff like that. Oh, the guy who plays uh, Luke Cage is in here, too. Uh, from uh, Netflix. I can't remember his name right now. Maybe Mike Coulter. Is that who it is? Uh, there's a few other uh, recognizable people in here though, but uh, looking forward to checking this one out. I've seen clips of it and it looked pretty funny, so I figured why the heck not. Next up is one that I haven't seen since it came out in theaters and I remember loving the soundtrack and it's only on a, out on DVD. It deserves to have a Blu-ray release. Uh, I would love to see. There's so many movies that still deserve Blu-ray releases. Let me know what other movies you'd like to see get a Blu-ray release. Let me some comments down below. And it is Out Cold. I, I think this came out in 2000 or 2001. I remember seeing it in theaters. I remember I worked at uh, uh, Sam Goody uh, back in the day. And uh, I checked out the soundtrack. I picked up the soundtrack at the time. Uh, great soundtrack uh, for that time period. Eve Six, Lit, Foo Fighters, Some 41. A bunch of those kind of bands that were really popular like the early 2000s. Uh, but basically, uh, Zach Galifianakis is in here too. Jason London. Uh, who else is it? I know there's a bunch of other people. Lee Majors. Um, some other people that are recognizable. But basically, they're uh, kind of these slacker snowboarders working on a ski resort. And somebody passes away and they're going to sell the ski resort. And it's just ridiculous comedy uh, snow movie. And it's a lot of fun. There's a bunch of these kind of ones out there. I think there's one called Ski School. There's a few others. But this was so much fun. The soundtrack... The cast chemistry, the comedic elements, it just really worked for me. And a really early role for uh, Zach Galifianakis, too. Um, but a lot of fun from what I remember. Um, and I can't wait to revisit this one, too. And this is one I wanted to pick up for ages. I think this was like 450. So very happy. So there you go. Those are all of uh, my Blu-ray goodies and my movie, uh, my birthday goodies right there. My movies right there. And then Funko Pops and boxers and socks and candy and all kinds of goodness. So let me know what uh, you think of all of this. What was your favorite pickup uh, from all the, the birthday goodness? Um, if you've seen the movies, let me know what you think of them. Let me know what other movies you'd like to see get a Blu-ray release as well as a Criterion Collection release. And uh, let me know your favorite Adam Sandler movie. Um, yeah, any. let me know if there's any comedy movies that you would recommend me to check out. Because they're, you know, again, I'm very, I love stand-up comedy, but I'm very picky when it comes to comedy movies. Uh, again, horror's my favorite genre. I feel like I'm a little bit more forgiving with that genre. Um, but, yeah, give me some recommendations down below. And uh, let me know when your birthday is, too. Leave that comment down below. And I hope everybody's doing well. Take care.